Good morning, children. Good, Good morning, morning, Father. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Tobit and his son Tobias. And wasn't there an angel too in this story? <laughs> yes, Lucy. There's also an angel in the story. The story is based on the book of Tobit, which was written towards the end of third century BC. Shall I begin? Yes, Father. In the city of Tishbe, the native place of Elijah, there lived a man named Tobit. He lived with his wife Anna and his son Tobias. Tobit was a man of faith, and he lived according to the laws of Moses. But Israel was attacked by Assyria, and they took the Israelites to the town of Nineveh, their capital. Tobit and his family were among the captives. These exiled Israelites had settled down outside the city. Seeing that the Ninevites worshipped the idols, some people among the Israelites too started worshipping their gods. Hey, Tobit. Oh, hello. Aren't you worshipping the gods today? No, my friend. I would never worship the idols. It's against the law of God. Ha! Huh. You and your gods. God has already abandoned us. Look at our condition now. We should worship the Assyrian gods now. I'm sorry, my friend, but I would like to stand firm on my faith. Hey, who is Tobit here? Him. He is Tobit. Yes, I am Tobit. Why do you ask, sir? You must come to the palace immediately. The king wants to see you. The king? Why does he want to see me? I have done nothing wrong. I don't know about that. You must come with me right now. Hmm. All right, sir. I will come with you. He must have done something. Why would the king want to see him otherwise? Yes, it's true. He's going to get punished. Look what your faith has brought you, Tobit. Hmm. In fact, the king did not want to see Tobit for punishing him. He actually was going to reward him. Are you Tobit? Yes, my lord, I am Tobit. Why did you want to see me? I have done nothing wrong. Ha 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 ha! No, I'm not going to punish you. In fact, people have told me that you are an honest and talented man. I wanted to make you the supervisor in charge of foreigners who live in Nineveh. I also want to trade goods with our neighboring states. Huh? You should take charge from today itself. I will provide you with a house inside the city. Oh, thank you. Thank you, my lord. Tobit worked hard and he traveled far and wide for trading with different countries. The king rewarded him abundantly and he became very rich. One day, while he was in Rages, a small town in Media, he went to visit Gabel, one of his old friends. Jabel, my friend, I want you to do me a small favor. What is it, my friend? Here, this bag contains ten talents of silver. Huh? Why are you giving this to me? I want to keep this money safely for you. I have more than enough money with me today. I don't know what's going to happen in future. Could you please keep this money safe for me? I will come and collect it when I need it. Of course, my friend. I will keep this safe for you. You can trust me. But by the time Tobit reached back Nineveh, the good king had died. His son had taken charge and he was very, very cruel to Israelites. Hey, Tobit. Hello, sir. How are you? Not good, Tobit. I'm here to warn you. What happened? Tell me. The king died a few weeks ago and his son is ruling the kingdom now. Huh? Oh no. The new king has removed all the Israelites from his council and he has replaced you to my friend. But why? 
You mustn't protest, my friend. I'm telling you this in good faith. He is killing the people of Israel for no reason. But, but what wrong did they do? Is being an Israelite a wrong thing? Shh, be silent. Look over there. That's what he did to the people who protested him. Oh my God, why did he do this? And when were they hanged? That must be a few days ago. A few days ago? Their body deserves a proper burial. We can't let their bodies be eaten away by vultures. We must bury them at any cost. You're on your own, my friend. I can't help you with that. If the king knows that I buried their bodies, then the next body will be mine. I'm sorry. No. I can't let their bodies hang like these. And that night, Tobit took the bodies and gave them a proper burial. What? Where are the bodies? I don't know, my lord. Maybe someone would have taken the bodies to bury it. What do you mean someone took it? Find out who did this and hang him! Yes, my lord. Realizing his life was in danger, Tobit fled from the city. When the king knew that it was Tobit who had buried the bodies, he confiscated all of his wealth. Tobit's family was reduced to poverty and they had to live without Tobit for many years. After many years, the evil king died and he was succeeded by a new king, Esur Haddon. He was a kind man and he ruled the land just and fair. When Tobit realized it was safe, he came back to his home. My home, it's so good to be back. My husband, you're back. Anna, my dear. It's so good to see you. Where is Tobias, my son? There he is. He was out for working in the fields. Father? Father! Tobias. Father, you're back. How are you, my son? You... you have grown up so much. Come, dear. Let's go inside and have something to eat. You look so weak. Anna prepared a huge feast for Tobit, who came after a long time from hiding. Oh, it's so much food. We are seeing you after a very long time, dear. Please eat and fill your stomach. But... There is plenty here. We must share the food with the poor. Tobias, go into the town and bring some of the beggars. The Lord has been merciful to us. We must share this food with them. We can call the poor tomorrow. You must eat this first. No. Food must be shared with the hungry. Tobias, please go and get them now. Yes, father. You are overdoing it. When will you start thinking about your own family first? Haven't you learned anything from what happened to us so far? Don't worry, dear. If we help the poor, then God will take care of us. Father? Father? What is it, son? What happened? Father, there's a dead body lying in the market. It looks like somebody killed another Israelite. Is there anyone there with the body? No, the body is just lying there alone. All right, let me go and see. I can't let one of our own just lie there. But please, have your meal first. I have to bury the body first. I will come back and eat after that. Tobit took the body and gave it a burial with the help of his friends. <sighs> And that's done. Why haven't you still learned? You just returned from hiding because of burying the Israelites. If someone comes to know what we did, we will lose our heads. But how can we allow our brother's body to be eaten away by birds? No, I cannot let that happen. We are leaving. We'll get in trouble if someone sees us here. Aren't you going home, Tobit? No. I touched a dead body, and I'm unclean. 
I will sleep under this tree tonight and go home in the morning. But that night, bird dropping fell on his eyes and he lost his eyesight. Ah, oh, I can't see. Oh my God, bird dropping in my eyes. I can't see. No. Tobit's life became more miserable once he lost his eyesight. Anna had to work as a maid to support the family. Oh, there you are, sitting around all day doing nothing. Anna, you are home. Did you get any food? I'm starving. Why should I be the one to get food? Why don't you ask your God? You are always praying to Him. Don't talk like that, dear. God will help us. I have had enough of you and your God. Lord, my God, have mercy on us. Look kindly upon our sufferings. In the meantime, in the city of Media, Sarah, the daughter of Ragel, had lost another husband. It was her seventh husband who had died, and every man who she got married to died the very next day. Look at Sarah, just sitting and crying like as if she had nothing to do with it. You think her husband just died? She must have killed them all. And now she's pretending to know nothing about it. Not one or two, but seven are dead. Stop it! Please don't talk like that about me. I'm innocent. Oh, you want us to believe what you say? Everybody in this town knows that you are the one who killed them all. No, I didn't kill them. Please believe me. What do you want us to believe? That one by one, seven of your husbands had heart attacks? And that too the very next day? Stop it. Please don't say any more and go away. Okay, we'll go. But don't think that we believe you. Oh God, I have had enough. I would rather die than go on living like this. Lord, please have mercy on me. Anna, I just remembered that I had given some money to my friend Gabriel. We could get it back any time. Huh? You are remembering this now? You should get the money immediately. We don't have to starve like this anymore. Tobias, I'm blind and I cannot travel that far. Can you go to Rages and collect the money from my friend? Of course, I will, father. Good. Then you must go and find a trustworthy man to travel with. We can pay him for his time. I shall go right away, father. Tobias walked for a long time searching for a travel companion. He couldn't find anybody who knew the way to Rages. Ah, I'll sit down here for some time. How am I going to find someone who knows the way to Rages? Hmm, I must trust in Lord as Father says. He will show me a way. Hello. Huh? His face is so, uh, so beautiful. What do you want? I saw that you were sitting here tidily. Is there something I can do to help? Oh, I'm looking for a travel companion who knows the way to Rages in media. I can help you. I know the road to Rages. I have been there many times. That's wonderful. Do you know the house of a Gibel there in Rages? Ha! Huh, of course I do. I have stayed at his house for a while. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a great coincidence. Please, can you come with me to Rages? I can pay you for your time. Sure, why not? We can start today itself if you want. Oh, by the way, my name is Tobias, the son of Tobit. What's your name? I am Azarius, and I belong to the same tribe as you do. All right, come, let's go home and pack our things. 
Tobias left for Rages along with his newfound friend and travel companion, Azarius. They sought the blessings of Tobit before they left for their journey. Azarius, please take good care of my son. I will, sir. My son, may the God bless you. May his angels protect you all the time. Have a safe journey and return to us soon. Tobias and Azarius walked for a long time and soon they reached the banks of river Tigris. Tobias, it will be dark soon. Let's camp here tonight and continue the journey tomorrow morning. Yes, friend. Hmm, the water looks very clear here. Let me take a bath. Go ahead. The water is very deep, so be careful. I won't go far. Hmm, it feels so nice. Huh? What is that? It's... it's a whale! Azarius, help! There's a whale coming! It will kill me! Don't worry. It's just a fish. Catch it by its tail and throw it onto the shore. Huh? That was so easy. Here, take this knife. Hmm, we can roast the whole fish on fire. It will be delicious. No, I want you to cut the fish and keep the heart, liver and gall separately. We can roast rest of the fish. Huh? Why do you want to keep those? I will tell you that on our way. Tobias did as told to him. He kept the heart, liver and gall of the fish separately wrapped in a bag. They continued their journey and after a few days, they reached the city of Egbana. Look there. That's the city of Egbana. Did you know that you have one of your relatives living there? Our relation? Father didn't say anything about them. His name is Ragel, and he has a beautiful daughter, Sarah. You, my friend, are her next of her kin. Sarah? Daughter of Ragel? I think I've heard the name somewhere. Hmm. You must have heard the stories of how seven of her husbands had died after marrying her. Oh, yes. I've heard about the evil spirits that is in love with her and how they kill anyone who marries her. Yes, it's true. Not one of her husband had survived a day after marrying her. Poor girl. I hope I can do something to help her. I think you should marry her with the intentions of starting a sacred family. Huh? But what about the devils? Don't worry about them. I will take care of that. Come, let's go to their house. There's something special about him. Anyway, I'll do as he says. Tobias married Sarah as Azarius had told him. Tobias, son of Tobit, I give you my daughter, Sarah, to be your wife according to the law of Moses. Azarius instructed Tobias to burn the heart and liver of the fish inside their room. What are you doing? I'm burning the heart and liver of the fish that I caught the other day. Why are you burning those? I don't know, dear. My friend Azarius had told me to do this. Now come on, Sarah. Let us pray for God's mercy. Oh God, have mercy on us and let us live together for a long time. Oh God, please don't let anything happen to Tobias. His father had suffered a lot and my daughter had been suffering for a long time. Please let them live for a long time. Master! Master! What happened? Did Tobias die too? No, Master! He's alive! <laughs> Tobias is alive! Praise and glory to you, my lord. Thank you. The evil spirits in Ragil's house flew out when Tobias burned the heart and liver. Tobias was alive 
and he was happy that he did as Azarius had told him. My friend, I don't know how to thank you. My father-in-law has given me half of his wealth too. My father and mother don't have to starve anymore. It's all because of you. Thank you, my friend. Everything happens as per God's plans, my friend. Now you stay here. I will go to Rages and meet Gabriel. Thank you. Here, take the scroll with you. This document will tell Gabriel to hand over the money to you. I will be glad to do it. I will be back within a week. Azarius returned quickly, and when he came back, Gabriel also came with him, carrying the money. Tobias decided to return to his father along with his wife Sara. My daughter, go in peace. Respect your husband's parents as your own. Let us hear only the best about you. They traveled for many days through the hills and deserts. Tobias had become a very happy man now. He had a beautiful wife and he had plenty of money with him. Azarius, my friend, all these good things happened to me only because of you. I'm only sad thinking about my father. Only if he could get his sight back. Hmm. Do you have the gall of the fish that I told you to keep aside? Yes, I have. I've been carrying that all along. As soon as you reach home, you must put the fish gall to your father's eyes. Huh? Why should I do that? You must trust me, my friend. Hey, look! It's our son. Ha! Oh, he's back. <laughs> yes, he is, my son. Mother, it's so good to see you. Tobias told them what had happened, and then Tobias applied the fish gal on Tobit's eyes. Ha! Oh, I can see now. <laughs> I can see everything. Praise and glory to God for allowing me to see again. Father, this is a miracle. Yes, it is, my son. We must thank Azarius for this. It's he who told me to apply this on your eyes, and all the good things that happened to me, my wife, our fortune. It's all because of him. Son, I don't know how to pay you. We will pay you double. No, we will give you half of everything we have. Because of you, we were blessed in so many ways. Tobit, huh? Be grateful to the Lord. He has seen all the good deeds you had done. He has seen your miseries, and he has heard your prayers. I am his angel. My name. Is Raphael. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing mercy on us. And that day, God rewarded Tobit and his family for never losing hope in the midst of hardships. Tobit lived for a very long time, and he went on to see his grandchildren. So, children, did you like the story? Yes, Father. Shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, Father. Tell me where was Tobit and his family taken to? After they were attacked by Assyria. He was taken to Nineveh. Why did he have to run away from Nineveh? Tobit had buried one of the Israelites who was hanged. This angered the king, and he sent men to kill him. That's why Tobit fled right away from Nineveh. Very good, Lucy. How did Tobit lose his sight? One night, Tobit was sleeping under a tree. While he was asleep, droppings of a bird fell on his eyes, and he lost his sight. Good, George. How did Tobias save Sarah from the evil spirits? The angel told Tobias to burn the heart and liver of the fish inside their house. The evil spirits went away when Tobias did as the angel had told him. Right again. And how did Tobit get his sight back? Tobit got his sight back. When his son rubbed the gall of a fish on his eye. Correct, Matthew. 
That's all for today. I will tell you the story of Daniel tomorrow. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, everyone.